Hi, welcome to theCUBE. I am your host, Lisa Martin, and we are on the ground at Google with CloudNow, which is a nonprofit organization with leading women in cloud computing and converging technologies. Tonight is CloudNow's fifth annual Top Women in Cloud Innovations Award event, and we're very excited to be joined by one of the winners tonight, Diane Marsh, who is the Director of Engineering Tools at Netflix. Diane, welcome to the program. Thank you. It's so exciting to have you here. We'd love to know a little bit about the project for which you are receiving the award tonight. Talk to us about kind of the impetus of that and how you're leading this team to success at Netflix. Great, so um, as you said, I'm the director for engineering tools at Netflix. So that means that we build the self-service tools that all of the other engineers at Netflix use to take their code basically through build, um, packaging, and then deployment to the cloud. Um, and so it was really important to us since it's self-service that we provide a really great uh, self-service experience, something that, that all the engineers can do. They need to deploy their own code, they need to roll it back if there's a problem. So we build a tool, a continuous delivery platform, that allows them to not only deploy their code, but send it through several gates along the way. Um, this is a flexible platform, because if you say continuous delivery to people, people are like, wait a minute, I'm not ready for that train to go, right? I might need to stop in the way. So we built one feature into that called a manual stage, which if you can't completely automate your process, you can still participate on the platform because you can always have, uh, you know, that I need to push this button myself or I need to acknowledge an email or something like that as a manual stage in the process. Fantastic, talk to us about the team that you're leading on this project. The team is um, made up of about eight engineers, but the interesting thing about it is that this is an open source project, and so not only did we build support for the Amazon endpoints, because we're all in AWS, but we reached out to our friends in the industry, and Google worked on their Google Cloud endpoints, um, Microsoft is working on Azure endpoints, Pivotal worked on solutions for Cloud Foundry, Target and Veritas worked on OpenStack. And so this is a huge collaborative effort that not only produces a product that everybody can use, but also just brings together a bunch of people who are working on this product and who are kind of the mind share in the industry to share ideas and to sort of collaboratively build this project. I was going to say exactly, it sounds like a really great facilitator for collaboration. Um, from uh, a background perspective, you're in engineering. Did you grow up as a kid being fascinated by engineering? How did you get to being in this senior management position at Netflix? It's a really interesting um, question. I grew up in the, I was in high school in the early 80s and we didn't really have computers in high school then. We didn't have computers at home. And so I didn't have any exposure really to what computer science would be. Um, and at the time, we all went through these, you know, aptitude tests, right? Where we took tests and they told us, the, the, the test told us what they thought we would be good at. And um, it turned out that I was probably not a big surprise to me, really good in math and science and also in languages. And, uh, you know, so it was kind of an interesting confluence of, well, math and science and languages, maybe that would be computer science. And at the time my mom said, um, I think that computer science is going to be a really big thing. What was really interesting is Julie Hanna in the keynote today said, ex her mom told her exactly the same thing. Wow. So I think Smart the message women. here is we all need to listen to our mothers, right? Uh, right, <laughs> right. But yeah, so that influenced me a lot. We didn't have, we, only the, um, uh, the chemistry teacher had a computer in my high school. So I didn't really see a computer until I was in college. So in terms of, you, you, you had this aptitude for it, your mom was very encouraging, which is really fantastic and not something that we hear a whole lot. From a, a barrier perspective to women in tech today, I think we're all familiar with a lot of the statistics. One of the things that intrigues me is the social influence. When you were really developing your skills and finding this passion, this aptitude that you naturally had, were you influenced, um, or, or did you find that confidence or maybe some of the psychological components were an issue for you, or did you really just feel like, this is what I'm meant to do and I love it? Yeah, I think I was kind of just stubborn about it. I don't feel like I ever had any real barriers. Um, I went to a, a male-dominated university, so it was about four men to every woman in, in the university I went to, and computer science was you know, even less populated than that. Um, and maybe that early stage of you know, setting expectations of being one of the only women in the room, maybe that's helped me throughout my career because um, it was never surprising to me to be outnumbered in a meeting. I agree with you. I've had the same experience in the last 11 years I've been in tech, and it's just been something I've been used to. But it's it's interesting, you know, uh, here at theCUBE, uh, we're 
the flagship show of Silicon Angle Media, we've been focused on promoting women in tech for several years now, really recognizing there's a need to um, amplify the voice of these female leaders. Everyone's familiar with Sheryl Sandberg, Beth mm -hmm. Comstock, some of the other leaders, Meg Whitman. Um, but I think it's, it's an interesting, um, I love your background that you were not really hampered by that from a confidence perspective. I think that's a great message that other young girls need to know. Um, as we look at some of the barriers, there's also a tremendous amount of opportunity. And I think your recognition as one of the top women in cloud innovation, and cloud now as an organization, uh, Anita Borg and others, are great yeah. demonstrations that we are moving the needle forward. But something that you and I were talking about before we uh, off camera was really intriguing. And, and attrition is over 50% right now mm -hmm. for women that start tech careers that leave for other careers. And that life cycle is something that would, I think, be very interesting to explore. But you had an interesting experience um, after you had your second child that was um, quite, quite intriguing. Can you share that with us? Yeah, so um, after I had my second child, I was at a conference and I was talking to a woman um, who uh, wrote C++ books, and she's you know really a pillar in the industry, Nancy Nicolaisen. And, um, and we were just sort of talking and she said, you know, uh, I listened to all the topics that we're talking about these conference, and there are some things that are new. There's some really great concepts and, and new ways of looking at things, but your fun, but fundamentals are strong in people that have a degree in computer science, and you can learn all of these things. And she said, I think that um, when people take time off after having a kid, um, they feel like they have to learn everything that happened in their absence. And in an industry that moves super fast, like computer science, that might be a little bit overwhelming. And she said, I don't really think you need to do that. I think use the speed that this industry moves to your advantage, jump to the forefront of technology, and you know, start working there, start learning there, um, and recognize that most of your male counterparts who haven't taken time off to have a kid haven't been staying up with technology either. And so you know, keep that as confidence in yourself. And I think that was super important. I think as um, you know, we, we tend to lose women around child you know, having when they have their children, mm -hmm. and and if we can give them confidence to come back, that this is, can be a welcoming field, and that they don't have to be intimidated about what they, you know, what they missed while they were gone. I think that's super important. Diane, that's fantastic advice. Use that speed to your advantage of technology. Thank you again for being on the cube. Congratulations on being one of the top women in cloud innovation at the Cloud Now event. Thank you so much. It's been great to be here. And if you know a woman that should be featured in our uh, in our segment. Uh, in our Palo Alto studios, tweet us at the Cube hashtag Women in Tech. I'm Lisa Martin for the Cube. Thanks so much for joining, and we'll see you next time.